Okay, so the topic for today is file formats and transfer. This is for when you're working on something in event to take somewhere else. So uh, first I'm going to go over how to transfer files within Inventor. There's nothing really special about copying part files in Inventor. So say you have this part file here. You can just copy the file, paste it into a different directory, go into Inventor. You can open that up, and the part file loads properly all the appropriate steps listed in the browser here. So that's simple enough, but say we try to implement this same technique when transferring an assembly. So we find an assembly here, go to copy, paste it into a new directory, to Inventor, open that up, and see here we get this error. And that's because none of the part files that make up this assembly have been copied into the new directory. And we'll see that if we close this error, that the assembly looks like nothing because all of the part files are unresolved. So in order for this to be transferred properly, you need all the part files that go into it. Um, if in this case, all the part files are in the same directory. Um, it's easy enough to just copy all this and paste it into the new directory. But say you're working with larger assemblies that take parts from many different places and that becomes a bit more difficult. So the best you transfer assembly files with the save option called pack and go. And what that does is it takes all component files in your assembly and puts it all into the same place. So let's just save this as something temporary. Okay, so for pack and go, if we find the original directory for our assembly, we can open that up. Okay, so once we're here, we can go to the I, save as, oh, you can browse for a new directory here, file formats and transfer, that's what we want. Hit search now, and we can click start. And when you're doing a pack and go, it's you know that you shouldn't have two p different parts with the same file name. Um, parts with the same name can exist if they are in different directories, but when everything is put into the same place, this method will take one file and use it to replace the other, and that's not a good thing. So right here, this is a warning to me that the, uh, the assembly file that I just copied over is already here, and it's trying to replace that, and I'll just hit yes. When that's done, you can just click done. And if we now go into our new directory, all the part files are here. So if we open this up, that's all well and good. Also worth noting that if you want to further micromanage an assembly, like here, for instance, you can go to an unresolved component in the browser. You can go to component and replace all. See that, see that name there? You can find that name. That same name, so that matches up. You can open that, and those components will be replaced, and the constraints between them should transfer properly. And uh, regarding drawings, so if you copy a drawing, paste it into a new directory, you go to Inventor, try to open it without any of the files. And we can see here that it's not necessary to have the connected files resolved to be able to view the drawing. You can still view the image. You'll be able to annotate it as much as you want, but you won't be able to place new views with this or edit existing views unless you have those component files resolved. Okay. So that's the gist of transferring files within Inventor. But when you're transferring files, you're not necessarily going to be using Inventor. So there are a lot of other formats that you can convert to for compatibility purposes, and I'll go over some of these here. Parts and assemblies probably 
the most universal uh, file format available for 3D CAD is the step file. So to create a step file, just go to the I, export as CAD format, change it to step file. I have these created as step files here. Uh, step files uh, can be used for other CAD programs. Uh, they tend to be much larger in size than the files in the format of that particular program. Um, if you have a step file like uh, this that you will convert back into inventor's format, all you have to do is save it. Um, it's important to note that when converting part file, that the steps in the browser will appear. And when you're converting assemblies, it's important to note that when you save it, you're going to be saving all the individual parts as well. And it's also important to note that no assembly constraints will exist in the assembly either. Okay, as far as other formats go, there's a lot of them here. I don't have experience with all of these, but if you know what you want, this should be fairly straightforward. Um, DWG formats are also quite common. DWGs can either be 2D or 3D. Uh, you can export a part or assembly as 3D. Um, if you go to a drawing, you can export that as a 2D. But given any part or assembly, you can pick any flat face in, in the file, export face as. You can export that as a 2D DWG, and you can also export that as a DXF, and that's also the only way to export a DXF out of Inventor. And as far as exporting outside of any CAD program, we have these images and PDFs. Um, images are fairly self-explanatory, you just get what you see. And regarding PDFs, if you export anything from Inventor straight into PDF format, it'll look just like an image. However, there is a way to create 3D PDFs not directly available from Inventor. There are add-ins you can download that uh, support exporting to 3D PDFs, or use this software called Inventor Publisher. Um, this is something you can get for free either as student software or as a free trial version. Uh, Publisher is a separate program from Inventor Professional. It's designed mainly for presentations. But to create a 3D PDF, all I have to do is go to New, insert a model, which is any part or assembly, wait for it to insert, export as Adobe PDF, make sure 3D PDF is hit OK. Save that somewhere. And the result here is a 3D PDF which viewed without any CAD program whatsoever. So uh, that's been a brief overview on file form transfer. I hope you've learned something here, and I'll see you later.